Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Ross here, the guy with the eye here. I haven't made one of these videos in a while and back by popular request, I have six lessons, six things that I've learned from Henri Cartier-Bresson and how I apply them to what I do with my shooting. Basically, he was the master of candid street photography and is pretty much the god name of uh, street photography and everything that goes with it, a French photographer. And one of the biggest, you know, quotes and everything that he's known by is that the, the capturing of a decisive moment. Obviously, he isn't the first photographer to capture a moment, but he's very, very well known for that. And here are six things that I think that work for me and that might help you as well in regarding street photography or just the way you shoot and your mentality maybe inspire you a little bit. I don't know. Number one, photography is a simultaneous recognition, a fraction of a second, and a once in a lifetime moment that could be missed. And that really sticks out to me because it's absolutely true. If, you, if you're not at the ready, if you're out there to capture things, um, you could miss something in a fraction of a second. Something great could have happened. Be it even if it was just a father picking up their kid and the kid was smiling and it was a great shot. You missed that moment because you weren't ready for it. Um, be it you're intimidated to do it or you're distracted or something like that or you just, you just didn't get it. So I always try and have the camera at the ready. I'm always surveilling. Uh, what's going around when things like that, when, when I'm out on the streets, intentionally doing, you know, street photography. Um, you just have to be alert and aware with it. And that's probably one of the biggest things is being alert and aware and knowing the senior you have. So that way you're ready for that moment because it, it sounds right. You get one chance at it. Your first 10,000 photos are your worst. And I absolutely can understand where this one is. And I even take it as if I go on the street for a couple hours, if I go into like Philadelphia and New York or something like that, and if I get basically one keeper, if two keepers out of, you know, 100, 200, or whatever photos that I take, and I know it doesn't directly correlate with this, but that's just how I relate it. I'm absolutely fine with that. If I can get a keeper that I could throw into a portfolio or just something that goes, oh, I got that shot. I don't care about the others. I don't care that I burned two or 300 other photos because I got that one that made me go, wow. And that's all that matters. You should be shooting for yourself, not for others. And I think that's one of the biggest things I take from that. Technical photography is nothing. It's not about the gear. It's about life interests. So true. And that goes back to one of the first ones I talked about is that the gear can get in your way. If you're always wanting the best, if you're always thinking, you know, always about the gear, that the gear makes the best photos. No, uh, you can even have your, your phone, your Android or your iPhone or whatever, and you can still capture good moments because they're moments, they're life events. It's not about the gear at that time. It's just about what you have to capture that gear and don't let that get in between. This is probably one of the biggest ones because when I first do, did a lot of street photography, I was rushing myself. I was just walking around. I wasn't letting a scene come up. But what Persan said is, the secret of street photography, if you're taking your time, you're not thinking about the gear and the photo and everything uh, as you're taking it. Think about all that prep and everything before or after. Don't let that get in the way. Take your time. And that's one of the biggest things that a lot of people say, and it's absolutely true. Take your time taking photos. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, one of the biggest things that I did in slowing my process and everything was learning to post up. I will go to scene, I'll get the background or the lighting the way it's coming and I'll get it the way that I want. I will post up and sit and sit there for a while to capture someone coming through or doing what I wanted. Uh, be it, you know, a billboard, someone's like looking down at someone and they're just simply walking. That scene is amazing to me because it looks like there's interaction when it really isn't. It's just a candid moment, but that's the point of stuff like that. To me, that would be a killer shot and that wouldn't get there if I'm just walking around. So don't be afraid to post up and take your time. A picture is good or not from the moment it was caught in camera, not afterwards. That's absolutely true. You can't take a bad photo and edit the hell out of it and think that it's gonna make it a better moment. You either captured the moment or you didn't. I, I think that's extremely relevant to everything and Bersan definitely expressed that in his work because the moments that he got and showed were moments. Be it funny, be it weird, be it whatever, hence the master of like candid photography essentially, the picture was caught in camera. You can't over edit it to make it look better. That's a fact. And I chose this one to be last because I think it's the most essential one in that it is all luck. Bersan mentioned that a lot and I absolutely agree. It's all luck. You can't just go there and assume things are happening. That's why you're there to capture candid moments. There's a difference between street photography and street portraiture, in my opinion. Um, street photography is more candid. It's not posed or anything like that. Street portraiture is still, I, I think, a subcategory to street photography, 
but it's not candid, it's, you know, posed and everything. That gets a little argumentative between people. I think there's a little bit of a distinction, but they are both street photography. One's just more intentional, the other one's more candid, obviously. And it, it's all about the luck. And that's some of the things that I, that I know <laughs> happens. I mean, I, I could just be sitting at some place and all of a sudden something I see walking up, I take out my phone, I, I'll capture the moment. Or if I have my, you know, my X-T2 or something like that and I get lucky, I, I, I just said it, I didn't even mean to, and I get lucky, I get the shot that I need. These are basically the six big lessons, lessons that I took, took from uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson. And, and you could go from there. I know there's other street photographers and everything out there and other photographers. And uh, I've covered some of them already and my inspirations and what I got from them. So I'll link that playlist. I don't even know if there's a playlist. I'll link that playlist down below. If so I've already done a couple and you guys and girls seem to have really enjoyed them. But share your thoughts as well. What lessons or have anything that you've learned from Brasson's work? Let me know. And I'll share more of these as we go along.